Rich here, and that was some hybrid picking. Well, it was kind of me messing around a little bit over an A7 chord using a technique called hybrid picking, which is where you use a flat pick. Well, my pick's kind of dark, so it might be hard to see, but I'm using a pick, but I'm also using the fingers of my right hand in combination. Some people call it chicken picking, hybrid picking, whatever you want to call it, it's where you're using your fingers and a pick together. Um, you hear it all the time, and it's a great way of like skipping across strings, you know, like if you're a blues player, um, which let's face it, if we're electric guitar players, we're kind of blues players, um, you might have heard like uh, a turnaround ending like this. Something like that, right? That is uh, a style, you can do that with a pick, right? You can jump around, you know, and you're skipping strings with a pick, but you have to do a lot less movement if you learn how to chicken pick, right? Um, so, uh, take a look at my right hand when I'm doing this with a pick, right? My hand is like moving a lot because I'm skipping from the G string to the high E versus if I do it with uh, a pick and then I use the middle finger to get the upper string. My hand hardly moves, which allows me to play really, really fast and intricate stuff uh, without having to do a lot of, you know, jumping around with my right hand. Um, and me personally, I'm a, f I'm a fan of not having to do a lot of, a lot of extraneous movement, a lot of extra work. Um, and so in order to get fast and flashy and cool licks and stuff, um, I use a combination of hammer-ons, pull-offs in my left hand, and hybrid picking in my right hand to get stuff like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Right? I don't, I don't even know what I did. I just did something in like A7, but I'm using hybrid picking. And it allows you to really do a lot of stuff with very little movement, and it's a fantastic technique if you're looking to increase speed, but you don't want to be like, you know, like a, a, a Satriani shred player. Not that there's anything wrong with Satriani, he's a great player. Uh, but not everyone wants to be him. Maybe you're more of a blues or a country guy. In that case, hybrid picking is for you. And so today I'm going to show you a bunch of hybrid picking licks uh, that you can sort of begin your journey. Um, they're not like expert super flashy licks. They're ways for you to go from being just a flat picker to a hybrid picker. All right? So stick around. I'm going to show you a bunch of cool licks to help you get on your way. Okay, so if you're completely new to hybrid picking, basically you're just kind of using a pick like you normally would. Presumably you're a flat picker. If you're a finger picker, um, this is kind of like using a thumb, like using your thumb plus fingers, but instead of your, just your thumb, you're using a pick. So get a pick, and uh, I have this in another lesson, but I'll just kind of like give you a little snippet. Use a thick pick. Use a hard pick. Don't use flappy, uh, thin little picks that will like slap across the strings. Those are very ineffective for a lot of styles. Um, but in any case, so grab your pick, with your index finger and your middle finger. If you're the kind of player that plays with your, uh, I'm sorry, what did I say? Grab it with your index finger and your thumb. That's what I meant to say. Uh, if you're the type of player that plays with your pick in your middle finger instead of your index, right, and you play like that, you know, with your middle finger grabbing your pick, this is gonna be a lot harder for you because you limit the options of your hybrid picking fingers. Whereas if I hold it between my index and thumb, I'm excluding my pinky, I don't really use my pinky to hybrid pick. I have two other fingers I can use to pluck the strings above. If I'm holding it with my thumb and my middle finger, then I really only have my ring finger, so it limits my options. So if you are the type of middle finger pick player, I encourage you to try to switch to your index finger. It just will make you more versatile. Um, but that being said, uh, the first hybrid picking lick that I think you should learn uh, is basically, I'll play it for you, and it's, it's fairly simple, but it sounds like this.
it's not a super complicated idea, but you can use it really effectively, and it's a great springboard to launch other licks that use a similar foundation, but not the same notes. Um, and so we're on the G string, 7th fret, and what we're doing, I'm plucking the G string with my pick, and then I'm playing the B string, 8th fret, with my middle finger. Right? And so what I'm doing is I'm hammering on 7 to 9 uh, with on the G string, and then I'm getting that middle finger uh, G note on the 8th fret right afterwards with my middle finger of my right hand. Like that. And you might think, well, what's the point? I could just do that with a pick. Like that. But, as you'll see, you can stagger your pick and then your middle finger of your right hand, you can hybrid pick notes back to back really quickly. You hear how fast those are? Ba-dum, 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 right? That's virtually impossible unless you sweep, unless you like practice sweep picking to do that with just a pick. So that's why like if you're playing fast or like, you know, um, country style stuff or something like that, hybrid picking is really effective because you could play notes really quickly back to back. And so if I if I include a hammer on in that I can end up getting those three notes really quickly. Right? And another effect of hybrid picking is that you can really pronounce a note. Right? It's loud and snappy. Right? You can do that by kind of slapping and popping that note with your finger instead of with a pick. There's a bit more of an articulation, there's a little more aggression when you snap the finger, uh, when you snap that note with your finger instead of a pick. So in any case, this exercise is in triplets. So if you think one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, each one of those will get one of these notes. One and uh. Right? And so it's like pick, hammer on, finger. Pick, hammer on, finger. One and a, uh, two and a, uh, three and a, uh, four and a. Uh. Right? And you could take this and ideally you would like, you, you should be able to move this around in quick succession. And that is one of the best exercises that you could do to get introduced to hybrid picking. And so I'm really just taking this three note pattern and then going up a fret and keep going. All the way until my index finger is on the 14th fret and then I descend. index fingers on the sixth fret and then I slide that up but you can vary this the main idea is to be able to ascend and descend fret by fret using this technique um, and then obviously like I always encourage all of my students to take an exercise like this and rework it and play with it so like instead of just do what I just did absolutely and and make that a regiment until you get used to finger or hybrid picking um, but then take it and sort of rework it. Like, for example, instead of doing the hammer-on and then the note, you could do the note and then the hammer-on. Or, alternatively, instead of hammering on the G string, you can hammer on the B string. Say, for example, if I was hammering on 8 to 10 on the B and then playing 9 on the G. Right? And you move that around. Like that. And I mean, just that there is an effective way of moving up and down the fretboard getting cool new sounds. Right? So get used to that. Get comfortable playing um, two notes, I'm sorry, two strings, one with your pick, one with your finger. Um, you know, like these two main notes 
is similar to that uh, same concept that I did in the beginning where I was doing that blues turnaround. Everyone knows, right? If I'm in the key of A, A7, the blues turnaround. So that, I'm basically playing uh, fret 9, G string, and high E string. And I'm skipping the B string, which is why hybrid picking is so valuable, one of the reasons. Um, so pick on the G and finger on the high E, and I'm just bouncing back and forth. And then here I play both of them together. And then I do a little trill on the G string. So all of these are really good ways for you to get introduced to hybrid picking. So we're going to do a couple more licks, um, all of which will help facilitate these skills that we're developing in these sort of like intro exercises. All right, so the next idea, we're moving down to the low strings. Um, and I kind of hinted at this at the beginning in the, in the little intro thing that I was noodling around with. Um, but basically this one, uh, we're playing in a series of 16th notes and we're using unison notes. So for example, we're gonna play A on the low E string, fifth fret, and then with our pick, the lowest of the strings is almost always with the pick and the upper of the strings is usually with a finger. Um, and then we're gonna play the open A string with our middle finger. So doing something like that would be a great way to get started. And in fact, I mean, you can even take that simple idea and move up and down like an A minor scale. Right? That alone has some musical value to it. Right? That's not the exercise, but that's, you know, a cool way of incorporating hybrid picking. And because you can stagger the notes so quick, can really get those things really fast. Right? It's way faster than you can with, with a pick for most people, right? There are some shredders out there, right? And if you're one of them, congratulations. Uh, but if you're not, um, then this is a great way, this is a great alternative. So this exercise, we're going to once again do a hammer on on the lower string. So hammer on three to five, and then an open A, but this time we're going to be doing sixteenth notes. So like, uh, it should sound like this. That type of an idea. And you could do 16th notes, you could do triplets, the rhythm, play with it, and like I, like I said, take whatever I give you and twist it around and rework it and experiment with variations of the same idea. Um, so yeah, just hammering on. And then open string, right? It's the same concept as here, hammer on. Except instead of an open string here, we were playing a closed string. But here we're doing an open one. Right? And you could take this, and this is a unison idea. I'm playing a fretted A with the hammer on, and then an open A string. You could do the same thing on the next set of strings. It'll give you a D. And then you could do it on the G. And then you could do it on the B. And then the E. Right like that. Right, that's a cool way of doing something. Now you're actually changing strings. something like that. All, right, all of these are really, really useful ideas um, and a fantastic way to get you involved in hybrid picking, right? So like I said, take them, play with them, twist them around and see what comes out of it. Um, and I got a, a one or two more for you. Okay, so this next one, um, this next one's a really, really cool idea and it's a great one. It fits easily in your minor pentatonic box. Uh, 
Um, and so what we're doing, we're uh, basically, our root note here is A, we're in the A minor box, and we're basically going to um, do a, like an every other note sort of a thing, where we're going to be playing this A and then climbing up the pentatonic scale using our middle finger of our right hand to pluck each note above it. So it'll sound like this. Right? And I could just play with that idea. Something like that, right? And so what I'm doing here, I'm doing a quick hammer on from five to seven, and then I'm playing this fifth fret note on the G, and then back to the A, and then I get my pinky on the G string on the seventh fret, back to the A. Every other note is this D string A. So that's right, and if I do that fast, I could really play with some cool ideas. Ah, <laughs> so I'll try that again. And you can expand it even more if you know notes that aren't in just the straight minor pentatonic. You can do all kinds of cool stuff. Right? And you have this pedal tone of this note here just ringing throughout the whole thing. And it's a great way, like I said, of playing quick stuff. And notice my right hand, it's like barely moving. If I wanted to do this with just a pick, I would have to go... And then my, my, my stroke is getting wider and wider and wider the farther away I get from this drone note, and the chance of making a mistake get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Um, and, you know, like some players like to do it that way. I used to do it that way until I stumbled upon hybrid picking, and I was like, well, I'm never going back. <laughs> it just makes no sense. Um, and so another, like, cool, flashy uh, A minor pentatonic lick that you can play sounds like this. It's real fast, and it's awesome. This is kind of like a little, maybe Eric Johnson inspired, although I don't think he does this with hybrid picking. I do. Um, but this is a kind of an idea where he does this in fives. So he's descending the pentatonic scale in five. Right? One, two, three, four, five. And we're going pull off, pull off, pick. Right? And then we do the exact same thing starting on the B string. And then starting on the G. And then starting on the D. And then you can finish there. So that sounds like... One more time. my right hand, the way I'm doing it, I'm plucking that first note with my finger, and then I'm doing pick, pick. So pluck, pick, pick, pluck, pick, pick, pluck, pick, pick, pluck, pick, pick, pick. So of each set of five, I'm only plucking with my middle finger on the first one. It's a super fast way of playing. Super fast. Um, and there's a bazillion more uh, licks that you can come up with with hybrid picking, but I think these are a good foundation for you to start with. Um, these are an 
an excellent series of things that you can do to increase your comfortability uh, or your comfort level, I don't know, comfortability, <laughs> with your comfort level with playing with a pick and your middle finger. And as always, I'm always available for questions, for tips. If you think you have it, but you're not quite sure, and you're like, ah, I want somebody to check it out, shoot a video, send it to me, send me a DM, check me out on maxrichmusic.com. There's a bunch of things. In fact, you should go over there, and you should sign up for my weekly newsletter where I offer lessons like this, but a lot more in-depth and a lot more personalized, and my subscribers can ask me direct questions, and I'll work with them and answer them. So if you're feeling like you're up to it, and you feel like uh, you want a little more in-depth knowledge about this sort of thing, head on over to maxrichmusic.com, sign up for the newsletter, and if you're feeling so inclined, uh, hit that donate button, um, and maybe offer a couple of cents, maybe a, a few bucks for a coffee, something to help me keep creating content and offering you free lessons like this helps me out and helps keep the content flowing. So see you over on maxrichmusic.com and thanks for watching.